Welcome aboard the North Yorkshire Moors Railway for a journey back in time to the golden age of steam. Good afternoon. Can I see tickets, please? Every year, half a million visitors come to marvel at these miracles of Victorian engineering. I came all the way from Ireland for this. Keeping it all on track are a dedicated team full of pride, passion and true Yorkshire grit. Ah! Be honest, we love it. Engine shed manager Piglet is in charge of all things mechanical. I've just pranged it into the side of the building. Got that Miley Cyrus song in my head now. Boss Chris has to balance the books. I'm not the fat controller. Signalman Alistair works the points. No rest for the wicked. And Chief Boilersmith Mark must keep the engines in good health. We are the heart experts of the steam engines. This time, it's war. It now gives me great pleasure to hand the railway over to the military. 30,000 dress up for a taste of the Blitz spirit. There's a gap at this end. I've no idea where the other bit's gone. But the weekend becomes a battle with the elements. The ground's saturated and it's really strong winds, saying up to 55 mile an hour today. And a problem in the engine shed gets the event off to a nightmare start. Is Control aware about the issues with Repton? It's a roller coaster ride through glorious country. This is the Yorkshire Steam Railway. All aboard. We've got a ticket for the dog. <laughs> It's October, and there's just a week to go before the North Yorkshire Moors Railway's biggest and busiest event of the year, War Weekend. An army of volunteers are hard at it, transforming the railway's four stations back to Second World War Britain. All the volunteers are going to be putting up the flags, posters, sandbags outside. 30,000 people, all wearing period costume, are expected to descend on the NYMR for the three-day event. What we've got to do now is change the face of the station to make it look like it would have been in 1939 at the outset of the war. Everything we possibly can do to dress it as it would have been. The volunteers take great pride in their attention to every little period detail. Because of the glass, the tape was put up to stop the glass shards from flying out everywhere, so everybody taped up their windows. What, this end right down to this end? I think it's just a feeling that, you know, we were all together at that time. And if we hadn't reacted to all the posters and all the requirements, we might well have not be here today quite as we are now. And I think people like to tap into that. Boss Chris is checking on how preparations are going. The sidings, what's, what's the sidings? The sidings is our pickering activity. It's where we have a beer tent, the entertainment goes on, a lot of dancing, a lot of displays. I also quite enjoy having a pint or two here at the end of it as well. So. The bottom line is never far from Chris's mind. Numbers-wise, it is two to three times busier than our busiest summer day, which, if you've been here on a very busy summer day, is very busy indeed. But the event is about more than just money. Wartime. It's a time when the railway can enjoy itself. It's when people can come along and we see lots of happy and smiling faces. And more to the point, it's damn good fun. Most visitors just come for a good day out. But others take it very seriously. This is the area they um, turn into a, a kind of military trench zone. They get their bivouacs out, they've got the cook stoves going, they're in full military uniform, and they live in a hole. To cope with a tenfold increase in passenger numbers, over at the engine shed, Piglet is having to bring extra engines into service. Right, so we'll go see how they're getting on with the DMU ready for war weekend. And that means using the unloved diesels. There's only a few days to go, and we need to make sure that thing's up and running. Cup of tea for the journey, like. When it was introduced 60 years ago, the DMU, that's diesel multiple unit, was a rail revolution, combining carriages and an engine all in one. Hello? In there, Bob? It isn't everyone's cup of tea, but the DMU is vital for the wartime schedule. Just this one power car. 
the DMU is just as temperamental as its steam cousins. So we've got one working. These are the diesel blow eaters that warm the, the actual DMU up. They like the cab heating and uh, it's not firing up, it's not igniting. These are pretty important for keeping all the punters warm, especially at war weekend. It can be a bit chilly at this time of year. This is pretty much our biggest sort of event of the year. I think it's really, really important that people do recreate these things, you know, to, to, to give people a, a living example of what life used to be like during really difficult times, you know. It wasn't a good time as part of our history, I guess, was it? But it was an incredibly important one, and, and I don't think it should be forgotten, you know. With only a few days to go, he's still got quite a few niggling faults to do to get it running, so the pressure's on a bit, and you can tell that, you know, he's a little bit, a little bit stressed. Right, I'll leave you to it, Bob. It's not just the staff who are getting ready for the big event. My wife and daughter are going to dress up and be part of it, so they're trying to convince me it's a good idea, but I've, I've never dressed up before, you know what I mean? I'm normally too busy trying to help keep these things running, you know, I'm making sure the passengers can get to and from, and I'm not really into dressing up, really. It's not my kind of thing, you know. If I could dress up as anything, it would probably, like, I don't know, a nice dress or something like that, and a pair of high heels, you know what I mean? Maybe something like that. I've never done that before. Now that I'd love to see, Piglet. They say an army marches on its stomach. If that's true, they're going to be very busy in the tea room this weekend. One bag of Yorkshire tea. Even the food is going to be authentic wartime. Right, we'll just put this salad together. Tea room manager Jeanette is cooking a period staple, corned beef hash. Corned beef hash I don't like full stuff, but I don't mind making it. If I was in the war, I suppose I wouldn't have a choice. I would have to eat it. They were on rations in the war, so there wasn't the roast beef and roast pork. Jeanette's not big on history, but the event strikes a chord. My father was a prisoner of war, and he used to eat dead rats, so... If we used to turn our noses up at home, he used to say, I'd kill for that, and I think, all right, shut up, Jeanette. But that's, that's what prisoner of war, because food was very, very scarce. They didn't get fed, basically. That'll do. We sell a lot of it, in all fairness. It's just not my cup of tea. Well, that's one corned beef ash. There's another three or four to go. Wartime weekend is by far the railway's biggest earner at a crucial time of year. A good war weekend will see them through the quiet winter months. A bad one could put them in trouble. Sandra! Ticket sales war weekend, any idea where we are at the moment? Yeah, looking really good actually, around about £27,500. Is that up on our steer, do you know? I think it probably is, yeah. Sales might be looking good, but over at the engine shed, they've got a new engine problem. It's Repton, a loco that's crucial for the weekend. The 84 year old engine has developed a serious boiler leak. I can't really see it, we just saw the water dripping out of it. Maybe it's nothing major. Head boiler Smith Mark needs to fix it, and fast. The pressure's on to get it back running again, really. But first, he's got to find the leak. Right on the underbelly of the engine. It's a job more suited to Harry Houdini. As you can see, space is a little bit limited, which has caused a bit of a nightmare for us. Mark thinks the leak has come from under the engine's cladding. Whatever's been leaking there has been leaking there for a while, by looks like. Uh, so, I've got a leak of cladding and pull the lag out of the way, which is rather, uh, as you can see, it's a bit mush. Mark's found the cause of the leak, so time for some more escapology. Whose idea was it to go out that side? Like an assault course. Get the most difficult side to go out. Oh. It's a leaking lap joint, where the two barrel sections overlap, and the rivets open to it. The lap there is leaking. So, a bit of a case of bulging midriff, then. It's a bit of a nightmare, it's having to cut into this to, to get it free. With the cladding cut out, the two sections of boiler can be resealed back together. That should all should push the two metals together and give me a steam-tight seal. Mark won't know if he's fixed the leak until the boiler is fired up tomorrow. It's ready for steam test tomorrow, so it's like in the morning, uh, and go from there, really. If that goes all right, then uh, we'll get them bits of tin back on and uh, have it back in traffic tomorrow afternoon. 
Tomorrow is the start of War Weekend, the North Yorkshire Moors Railway's most popular event of the year. We're putting the guard hut together, which will stand at the entrance to Gotham Station. We're prepping, ready for the weekend, because it doesn't just happen. <laughs> Unfortunately, there's a lot of work goes into it. As volunteers complete the railway's transformation back to Second World War Britain, some of the first wave of event visitors have arrived early to set up. Turn around there and park it sort of in the central bit, but slightly on the left. Thousands of people, serious war reenactors, and those who just love to dress up are expected. I heard about you, you killed, what was it, 30, 30 Japanese? 35. 35, they cooked them a meal. <laughs> it's probably the last big one in the calendar, Pickering, so go and enjoy it very much. The only thing the railway can't control is the weather. Torrential rain has been forecast. It's only rain falling, it's not bombs and bullets. You know, when you do get some people and they go, oh, we're going home, it's raining, and it's not really this spirit of the 40s, is it? Over at Gromont, even signalman Alistair's feeling the pressure. Wheels are spinning! The wheels are picking up! I've got a train coming down the bank from Gothland, and just to cap it all, I'm supposed to put a, an engine on the back of the train from Whitby, which is to go to the Pickering and pick some coaches up. To be honest, it's always like this before a special event weekend. It's, it's, all, it's all hell and no notion. A lot of running around and panicking. It's absolute mayhem. Alistair's still got time to indulge in his favourite hobby. I've got a couple of Germans, uh, Eastern Front, sort of late war, 1944-1945, that I'm having a play with. And these are probably the only Germans you'll see on the railway over wartime weekend. And that's because there's been a hoo-ha about some German reenactors. Previously at War Weekend, NYMR's Levisham station had been transformed into a German-occupied French village. But some bad publicity means this year there'll be a new, less contentious event. A lot of the reenactors are quite upset about it. Being told, I'm very sorry, we can't have you at the event anymore, would have been quite, you know, quite a wrench for them. Alistair has mixed feelings about banning the Germans. I think there's a place for German reenactors, but I'm not 100% sure that this is actually it. At the engine shed, the issue of German reenactors is the least of Head Boiler Smith Mark's worries. We're in steam, which what that does is pressurizes the boiler. He's struggling to get Repton ready for tomorrow. It's about 100 psi of pressure at the moment, so I'm going to go underneath and find out if the repair we did yesterday's has sealed it. As well as being awkward, the job is now hazardous. The water in there is well over 100 degrees. Boiling water issues of water dripping from above. I've got lack of space. Everything's red hot. Well, I'll go in and have a look. It's amazing. It doesn't even actually look like it's that bad. But the amount of water coming out of it's unreal. It's not good news. The engine has sprung a new leak. And with a fixing bracket in the way, this one's even harder to get to. The joys of steam engines, never ending. At Pickering, more people are setting up for the event tomorrow, with displays that bring to life some unusual elements of the war. Just make sure his hands up right side. The amount of people come and take the photographs of him and it's been all over the country. The trench reenactors are already digging in. I've not tried digging out, because that's where the cable is. Back at the engine shed, Cat and Sarah Pennington are also busy preparing for the weekend. The train mad sisters, both volunteer engine crew, are making sure the locos look their best. Not done a very good job, Catherine. Oh, Sarah. Never mind. Cat and Sarah are taking their first step on a long but time-honoured path to eventually becoming a driver. You're very pernickety. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I like cleaning it. It's really satisfying. It's their job to prep the engine so it's ready for the big day. And tomorrow morning, they'll be the ones lighting the fire in the engine's boilers. I like to work well weekend because it's my favourite event of the year. 
when you part of it and you've lit that engine and that yeah. engine's running for the day, it's a completely different feel. And you feel like when you're creating the yeah. experience instead of yeah. being a part of it, just singing. Yeah, yeah. yeah you you know, you've lit that fire to build that pressure that makes the pistons move, which makes the wheels move, which then pulls a train. Yeah. You know, that is with the people on it. Part of the event. Yeah. <laughs> The love of steam is a family affair. It's not just us, is it? We've no. got Dad. He's worked his way up from cleaner to fireman, and now he's a trainee driver. <laughs> and then, this is the theory, Dad driver, Sarah fireman, me cleaner. We can have, like, a Pennington engine. Dream team. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there you go. Yeah. Perfect. That was hard work. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah, I'm so ready. Oh, a cup of tea. Oh. Mark's preparations for wartime aren't going well. He's still struggling to get Repton's boiler repaired, but having fixed the original leak, he's now got a new one to contend with. So we have to remove the bracket first. Um, but the bolts that hold the bracket in are all rusted up, so we have to get a warming torch to warm the bolts up so that I can then remove the brackets. And then that'll give me full access to it. Using a blowtorch in the confined space is dangerous, but Mark has no option. Oh, go on, go on, go on. Yes, that's what I wanted. On to the next one. Now he can start fixing the leak. What I'll do then, I'll create a steam tight seal from it. And I, I know I've got it, because what I'll do is the water will stop and also it'll dry up really quickly. Mark uses a chisel to hammer the metal flat. But looking at that now, it's bone dry and it's completely stopped. Piglet's got Mark a reward, if he can find him. How are you there, man? Oh, yeah, I'm in here. I've got to find you somewhere. I've got a brew here, but I'm not quite sure how to get it into you. Oh, well, there's a little hole down here. If I put my hand out, you can reach it like. No, top job. Right, okay. enjoy your brew. All right, cheers, mate. I'm going to go back to the safety of the office. Carry on. Ta -da. See you. All Piglet's engines are ready for the start of the event tomorrow, but as he heads home, there's a bigger worry. The predicted storm looks like it's starting to hit. The weather's not doing us any favours, it really isn't. The ground's saturated, and it's really strong winds, you know. They're saying up to 55 mile an hour today, and there's already a few snap trees on way into work this morning, so we'll see what happens. The next morning, it's a cold and wet start to war weekend. Wind and rain has battered North Yorkshire overnight. But at the engine shed, sisters Kat and Sarah are in early to start getting the locos up to steam for the big day. Who's on the wall? I'm on that. Right. And I'm on the music. Yeah, right, right. That's ready to light. Lovely. Thank you. Complete with her period land girl headscarf, Kat certainly looks the part. Wartime weekend, now back in the 1940s. Lighting one of the star engines at the start of such an important event is a big responsibility. Oh, yeah. Well, if there's no fire, there's no pressure, so there's no engine. So I would say it's quite... This is quite an important job to have. Not bad, considering Kat's a newbie. That's yeah, that's absolutely fine. Do I know something? Couldn't do better myself. This is the first time I've done one on my own. <laughs> <laughs> but there's a problem. Cat's engine, or any others for that matter, are not going anywhere. Last night, the storm brought a tree down on the line. It's been cleared, but Kieran has been drafted in to do an emergency early morning track inspection. My whole purpose is going up the track, do a full line inspection, just make sure the track is safe to run. Last thing I want to do is send the first train out, find there's a tree in the middle of the line. This could be a nightmare start to the event. We've already got people have come from all over the country, all over the world, in fact, for this weekend, and they're already in Pickering. We're all here, ready to travel on the train. So last thing you want to do is they're all at Pickering Station, find out there's no trains, because it's just pure chaos. I felt sorry for you, old-timer. I thought I'd come and pick you up. Signalman Alistair completes the scouting party. Until we've done this track inspection and we're happy that this line's clear, ready to move, well, nothing is moving. It's as simple as that. If a train comes around the corner and potentially hits an enormous tree across the railway line, 
you know, we're looking at major accidents, you know, 400 tons travelling at 25 miles an hour. Their first stop is the site of last night's accident. This is the train that came down last night. It's quite a size. It's actually fairly stable. It's not going anywhere, That's is it? It's pretty stable. It's not going anywhere, so... It's fairly well stuffed, but we need to keep an eye on this. At some point in the next few weeks, that needs shifting. Now they've got to check the rest of the line is clear. Right. Are you watching our side, our watchers? Yeah. They've spotted a tree that's leaning at a dangerous angle. What's it like, Alistair? Fresh tree down there. What do you reckon, Kieran? Is it actually it's broke? definitely it's... shifted down there, look. Has it broke its back? I don't know if it's broke its back, but it's definitely shifted. You be careful. Yeah, it's moved on the route, hasn't it? Yeah, it's just... It's, the route's still in, it's still there. Actually, looking at this angle, I think it'll actually avoid the track anyway, won't it? Yeah. Well, especially with all that stuff there. Because what it's off to do, if it drops, it'll it's hit this tree. It's down this tree, yeah. Yeah. We'll get away with it. The rest of the 18 miles are clear. We've had a good full survey of the track. It looks all right. We've reported what we've seen to control. And now the first train's on its way up the hill to make the parade at Pickering. All's good. We've managed to win the war. I wouldn't go that far, Kieran. But at least the event can now go ahead. Not a moment too soon. Back at Pickering, it's 10.30, and the flag-raising ceremony, the official start to War Weekend, is about to begin. This is when the railway is formally handed over to the military, as all railways were during the war. Even boss Chris has entered into the costume-wearing spirit. You lot call me the Fat Controller, I've come as the Fat Controller. <laughs> You're pleased to know I've got a speech, so I'm going to keep you in the rain as long as possible. Welcome to the 26th year of wartime here at the North Yorkshire Moors Railway. First things first, I do have to express my thanks to all the participants. You all look great. And there's some words of thanks for the absent German reenactors. Join me in thanking the German reenactors for their sterling service over the many years they have put in at Leversham. It now gives me great pleasure to hand the railway over to the military. Please look after it. We need it for the other 362 days. Thank you. You got a round of applause, it's always a good sign. But some of the reenactors are still not happy. They've banned the Germans at Levisham. Big, big, big mistake. I really do hope it's a big cockle. Can we have a quick chat? It's one of the reenactors that's taken 10% of the facts and made 100% of the decision that the North Yorkshire Moors Railway are a, a, a bunch of snowflakes that just want to be politically correct. Excluded from Levisham, it's feared the German reenactors might go to other stations. Chris can at least count on the Home Guard for support to Whitby to look after Whitby, make sure we don't get invaded. This is probably my second year of doing this, so uh, it's a lot of fun. <laughs> we're, we're doing a patrol at Whitby, making sure everyone's all right up at Whitby. No Germans, no spies. But there's a more immediate problem. The weather is showing no signs of clearing up. In the sidings, the trench reenactors are digging in for what could be a very long and wet weekend campaign. There's a gap at this end. Um, do I get that string as well on the other side? I've no idea where the other bit's gone. Every man has a function. Private Franklin's is to be a tent pole. Two for three at the moment, so they're kind of, kind of getting there on the uh, tent and wetness scale. We shouldn't see any flooding, but should we get the uh, guns under cover so they're not just in the rain needlessly? It'll take more than some bad weather to break these boys' spirits. Not long back from his track inspection, Kieran's got his hands full again. The 11.30 to Whitby's got a problem with its brakes. Until they're fixed, it's not going anywhere. The entire service has to be suspended. 
So the issue is we've got dragging brakes, so the train's come through from Gromont with brakes dragging all the way, so it's made it hard work for the engine. The problem with the train's brakes could be on the loco itself or on one of the carriages. It's a time-consuming process of elimination. What's that dog gate? It could be the fact it's a loco over or it could be the coaches. And that's what we're trying to find out at this moment in time. So the train can't go anywhere now until we get this sorted. At the engine shed, Piglet's also struggling. I could have done without this drama this morning. Repton is playing up again. This time, there's a problem with the engine's lubricator, the thing that keeps the engine's pistons running smoothly. Hey, up. I think so. Is, is Control aware about the issues with Repton? Sorry, I'll, I'll phone him. Hiya, Darren. It's, it's not massively bad news. They're about to start putting it back together, the lubricator. I reckon it's going to take us about ten minutes. Pressure's on this weekend. We need a lot of engines. Refitting the lubricator is potentially hazardous. We've got to be careful. I don't want anyone getting hurt, you know what I mean? Once the lubricator's on, it should start to feed oil through. You can see the oil in the water. There we go. It's fixed, but the loco is now running late. It caused a bit of a delay there. Not ideal. Right, I'm going to go ring control and find out what Darren's going to do with it. We've got time because the unit was late. Lo oh, excellent. Right, lovely, OK. Hey, Bye. Kieran's problems at Pickering means Piglet's got away with it. They're running late, so actually the fact we're running late this morning isn't actually too much of a problem because we've still got time to get Repton round and on the train. So, happy days, really. We've sort of got away with that one a bit, a bit of luck, but, hey, you know, it happens. Back at Pickering, luck is definitely not on Kieran's side. With the 11.30 still stuck on the platform, the pressure is on. We're pulling each brake cylinder, and what we do is releasing all the vacuum out of it, and we'll start fresh. After checking all the carriages, he can't find anything. It must be the loco itself. And sure enough, it is. It's free, isn't it? Yeah. You've got a relief valve at the bottom of the loco on the brake handle that you pull. But what had happened, it's actually stuck in. It looks like it's going to be a busy weekend for Kieran. So we've got to keep the railway running so people have a good weekend. That's the top and bottom of it. The event draws people from all walks of life. Some people have come just because they love dressing up. Uh, it's the first time we've been here, so we just thought it was something different. Yeah. It's yeah. lovely, yeah. apart from the weather. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. When Mum Sue bought her original 1940s shoes for the event, they came with a surprise. You bought these shoes from eBay and you found yeah. a letter uh -huh. um, that someone written. Yeah. Um, while I was in World War Two, to yeah. my dad in Liverpool. Uh -huh. The woman that I got it from had enclosed it in the shoe box. Yeah. Yeah. Trying to decipher yeah. it with the handwriting a little bit. It was daughter Claire that discovered the letter. No. Dearest Pop, thank you so very much for forwarding Bill's letters to me. We have done well, haven't we? So close together and he still talks of coming home. The letter is from a son to his mother during the war. The raids here are quite exciting once again, and all three nights I was on duty. We were shelled and missed heaven knows how many times. The HE landed just outside the swing doors while I was just inside, and the blast blew the back doors downstairs. Yeah, so really interesting the way he plays it down to his mum, yeah. you know, to make sure like she's not fretting. They're really interesting, that. Yeah. It'd be brilliant to sort of track it down, any relatives to the letter. Yeah. Unfortunately for the railway, with no let up in the weather, the rest of the first day turns into a very damp squib. The trench reenactors thrive on authenticity. So for them, the wetter the better. You see, these lads are having a good weekend, enjoying themselves. It's now gone 11 o'clock at night, so I'm just going home to bed, to be fair. We'll just see what tomorrow brings. Hopefully it's all good. Hopefully this storm that's here will just disappear and die off. Right, it's home time. Time for us to experience the memory of sleep. <laughs> Gotta put as many layers as possible on just stop me from getting too chilly. Jesus Christ, mate. Happy now? 
stretch out now. Yeah, that's there. There, you see? You? Stop whinging. Mm. Bloody hell. It's the main event of the North Yorkshire Moors Railway's war weekend, the military parade through Pickering Town Centre. Yeah, we've asked people to start lining up for half ten, but it specifically sets off at 10.47. Head of marketing Laura's big worry is whether they'll get the crowds they were hoping for. There's a lot of pressure. There is a nervousness. You know, you don't sleep the night before, but you just never know what's going to happen. Everything hinges on the weather. As long as people aren't wet and damp, people can still have a good time. But it's one of those things, the weather, isn't it? You just can't plan for it. But boss Chris has got more than the weather on his mind. He's worried that disgruntled German reenactors might try to gate-crash the parade. So far, no sign of Germans, unless they're here as spies, of course. With just 15 minutes until the off, there's still not much of a crowd. Just fingers crossed there's a sea of people down that street. But like anything with a big scale event, you just never know. But fingers crossed. At least the die hard enthusiasts are out in force. Just come because it's an absolute brilliant event to come to. We come every year. <laughs> Some of the military characters are more familiar than others. Home guard, uh, generally called Captain Mallory. <laughs> to me, friend. French resistance. And when she finally gets here, French no resistance is with me. Bonjour, comment ça va? A French tart. Doing my bit for the war. I'll keep that to yourself, love. Pickering may be full of reenactors, but it's still a bit of a no-show from the public, and the parade's about to start. Oh, crikey, seven minutes to go. But the predicted heavy rain is holding off, and the street starts to get busy. I was a bit worried about ten minutes ago, but it's filling up now, so we got we got them two or three deep, so it's good. You see people everywhere. As the crowd builds, Chris takes on the job of head marshal. I'm in charge of the cone. Finally, I've, I've found what my role is here today. I'm cone marshal. That's my pet cone. Of, what do you call your pet cone? Oh, it's Brian the cone. Oh, Brian the cone. Yeah, it's Brian. So, uh, no, what I'm doing. Basically, ready for it to start, and when I get the tip, I'll do my very important job of moving the cone. Off you go, mate. Where you go? With military precision, the parade kicks off bang on time. Twelve different regiments and a cavalcade of 50 military vehicles from six different armies proudly pass through the town centre. Right, folks, you want to hurry along through? Okay, it's pretty impressive. Fire really. Evacuees. Pretty full, if you look at that marketplace. Then, with the parade in full swing, some very unmilitary-looking vehicles join the procession. Why are the coaches even coming through? We want to stop those coaches coming through before the military vehicles come through, all right? Chris and Brian the Cone take control. You're letting them through, hold on. Or maybe not. What up the high street? You're having a laugh. How's this happen, folks? Because now we're splitting the bloody parade in half. This definitely wasn't part of the plan. But with the buses gone, Chris gets the parade back on track. Out the way, mate. Come on. Don't get run over. That will ruin really my day. And there is a big sigh of relief when that initial parade is over and the crowd kind of heads towards the railway and you're just hoping that everything goes all right. But 
will the crowd still want to ride on a steam engine? Parade's going all right anyway. Good, good. Keep right to the back of the platform. It's a sight Chris was praying for. The platform is four deep. Excuse me, can you just step back a bit? Is that all right? Thank you. Now he has a different but more welcome problem. Crowd control. What you get is a packed platform, not free-flowing, and that's when it becomes worrying. Everyone's looking the part. All they need now is a ride on a steam train to help take them back in time. Even Repton, the weekend's most troublesome engine, is now behaving itself. Oh, nobody's dead, which is a good thing. <laughs> The old steam engines are also helping local school kids get a memorable taste of the past. We are reenacting the evacuees of the early 40s when railways were obviously instrumental in moving children into the countryside away from the danger. Morning, Sergeant Major. You all right, mate? Left foot in front of the right. We have to remember that children were evacuated not only from but also to this station. So it is recreating something that actually happened here. During the Second World War, millions of children were evacuated. In World War II, there was children in, li that lived in the town, and when the bombs, they thought bombs were being dropped in the city, they had to move to the country and we were away from their mum and dad. Each child was sent off with a gas mask and a label saying who they were and where they were going. And we're meant to be really sad because our parents, because we go for five years and we'll be like 15 when we come back. It's a poignant reminder of the reality of war. We've been doing World War II um, as, part of, as a topic at school. So today gives some of that experience of an evacuee and exactly what it was like in World War II for the children. Despite the weather, the bulldog spirit has prevailed and it's been a fantastic second day. Two days down, one to go. Nice quiet one, back to Gromont. When you think what the weather was supposed to be like, it's been fantastic. So no, really good. It's been nice, people are happy, no major issues, and they're always busy and the town was busy. Perfect. Riding on a steam train brings history to life. And in the railway car park, a group of reenactors are emerging from a third cold night in their trench. We didn't really sleep. It started off warm, but as the night went on, it definitely got colder. Progressively radio. Yeah. Time for a spot of authentic trench breakfast. Bacon flavored spam. Yeah. A breakfast for kings. <laughs> Engine shed manager Piglet has been fighting a different war to keep his engines going during the hectic weekend schedule. But today he's having a rare day off, and he's not alone. This is Mrs. Piglet, Jilly, and this is my daughter, Jessica. Thankfully, Piglet's had second thoughts about wearing a dress and high heels. I've become as charity shop's best wartime clothing of that they had for eight pounds. Um, even though I spend nearly every hour of every day here, it is nice to come out and sort of enjoy it. Well, I always know where he's going to be. He's always going to be at work. Jilly's a long-suffering steam widow. He loves what he does. He loves what he does. I wouldn't have him any other way. I think this is where they've dug the trench in our car park. First stop is the front line. You dig it all yourself, then? Oh, yes. That was uh, Friday night, about four hours. That's been my home for the last four days. You haven't slept in that overnight? I have. I don't think I'd stay in it. <laughs> Engine crew volunteer Cat is also enjoying the event. I've never seen so many people in Pickering, ever. Each year it just gets bigger and bigger and better and better. Cat has ditched her overalls for a slightly more authentic 1940s outfit. I made this dress and the, the coat and the fur is from the charity shop. Um, 
and I try to advance on myself every year to be the most perfect 1940s character that I can be. So we'll see, see what she. <laughs> Move on, please. <laughs> it's just a bit of fun, really, but a lot of people would look at good sense of humour for that little lightness in, in a very dark time, and I feel like these events really bring that lightness to, to heart, and obviously there you can see they're just here to have a good laugh, and I feel like that is such a spirit. It's the spirit of Britain, really. We, we don't take things too seriously. Piglet and family have just arrived at Levisham Station. They're off to see the new VE Day themed event. Let's have a look at the engine while we're in. But Piglet can't resist a quick check of his loco. That looks all right, look. I generally only ever see the engines when they're in the sort of engine sheds and we try to fix them, so it's nice to come out and see people enjoying it, you know. There was a fear that the new VE Day theme wouldn't be popular, but it looks like it's proving a hit. Sadly, Piglet won't be strutting his trotters. I don't think you're going to get me on dance floor out like that. Everyone's having fun. The Piglet is mindful of the price paid for the victory being celebrated. A, a lot of people put a lot on the line for, for, for who we are and what we are today in this country, so it's nice that we can sort of help people get that feeling of what it was like back in the times. It makes you proud, doesn't it? Railway was fundamental in the effort for the war, wasn't it? You know, in transporting goods around, people around. <laughs> Made you jump. <laughs> Piglet has spotted a display where he'd be right at home. Ah, there I am, look. Piglet's asleep. Ah, when can I move in? So I've made me a little pen. I've got my own little reserved area at Levisham. I look a bit like that, don't I? I have got the red scarf on, but yeah. It's the little pink cheeks. Roof doesn't leak either. Fresh straw, what more does a man need? Uh, you get wife. Whoa. Okay, that's it, we're ready for off. War weekend is almost over. Despite the poor weather, the spirit of Blitz Britain has prevailed and the event has been a great success. If we do a war analogy, this is, this is the happiness that is felt at the end of the war when we've overcome adversity. And I think to a certain extent, the staff and the volunteers as well have felt leading up to this event that there's been a lot of adversity that we've had to overcome and we've done it. The event ends with the flag-lowering ceremony when the military hand back control to the railway. This is where I have to say thank you very much to everybody involved, all the reenactors, the NYMR staff. Thank you for coming, thank you for being here. It makes it worthwhile. Yeah, well, that's it. That's the main event of the year over with, so we're going to head back home. We're going to have tea. Oh, we're going to have tea, are we? Oh, that's going to cost me. But yeah, it's been a good day, hasn't it? I've enjoyed it. A few pints, see people about and enjoyed it. Shame about the weather, but hey. Right, come on, let's go. Next time. It's one of NYMR's biggest events of the year, the Autumn Steam Gala. <laughs> busy, busy, busy. What fun, I love it. And the temperamental star of the Steam Gala threatens to ruin the show. Can't beat a bit of drama before a gala. I wish I never woke up this morning. <laughs> <laughs>